Donald Trump is officially the 45th president of the United States. What alternate universe are we living in? Hello everybody, what is up? I'm Julia, friends call me J-Rock. Thank you for tuning in to Tumbleweed Logic one more time. I appreciate you being here as always. If you are not subscribed to the channel just yet, be sure to hit the button somewhere along here. That way you don't miss anything. You wanna see dope videos every week, this is the place to be. So I decided to do another top five L's of the week video because Honestly, there is too much stuff that happened this week for me not to make another video. So without further ado, let's get into all the crazy stuff that's been going on this week. Number one, Bobby Shmurda. Well, actually, it's his team at this point. For those of you who don't know who Bobby Shmurda is, Bobby Shmurda is a Brooklyn rapper who is also part of a gang called GS9 and he got himself into some real legal problems and he's now serving about 15 years or so in prison. Unfortunately for the people who are around him in GS9, they're also getting some pretty hefty prison sentences. This week, another GS9 member, Santino Boderick. Boderick? Broderick? Y'all can look it up. He was sentenced to 117 to 130 years in prison. My first question is, why the judge didn't just give him life? I mean, at this point, I, I, I mean, he ain't getting out. What's really sad about this whole sentencing thing for, for Mr. Bo, uh, for Santino, was offered a plea deal back in September for only 15 years and he turned it down. Now he's gonna be serving over 100 years in prison. I'm sure that he's probably thinking, I could have taken that deal, but hey, life comes at you fast. Number two, Chrisette Michelle, girl. You tried it. Chrisette Michelle made the decision to perform at the Trump inauguration. And as you guys know, social media is very unforgiving. Black Twitter especially is very unforgiving. And Chrisette Michelle felt the wrath as a result of her decision. On top of that, she's also lost her Netflix deal. Spike Lee was considering using her music uh, for, for a project he was working on and he's pretty much said he's pulling the plug on that. Here's my take on it. I don't care that you want to make a check. Make your money. Hey, this is America. Everyone's just out here trying to get this dollar. I would respect you for that and say, hey, whatever comes with it, I'm willing to get this money. My problem with what she did is that she put out some letter, apology, you know, open book, whatever it is that you, you want to call it. She put that out there saying that she was trying to build bridges and trying to build, you know, and trying to bridge gaps and all of that. And the fact is, that's not how it comes across. If you really did believe that, if you really thought you were doing something good for your, for the people, good for, for America, good for, for black fans, the people who are supporting you, you would have come out and said that a long time ago. Unless they told you two days before the inauguration and then you decide to tell us the same day. But my guess is that she wasn't told two days before the inauguration because if she's an artist, they would want to make sure that she was booked early. And Donald Trump is having problems getting people to perform anyway, so I'm sure they reached out a while ago. You not saying anything lets us know that you too probably thought that there was something wrong with this and you chose to do it anyway. People seem to be using the whole bridging gaps thing as an excuse for them to sit down with whoever they feel like and then try to do damage control after the fact. Building bridges comes when you're having a dialogue with someone who's open to changing something, someone who's open to building relationships. And if, and if we've seen anything from Donald Trump, we know that he is only concerned about himself and his apprentice show and the size of his hands or the lack thereof, that's all he's concerned about. So singing at his inaugural ball is not gonna change his opinion on black people. You can look at Donald Trump's history when it comes to people of color, when it comes to black people and see that he has no interest in helping us. Get your money, girl, but don't try to but don't try to play us and beat us in the head. We already know what's up. As I said about Kim Burrell last week, we don't believe you. You need more people. Number three, America. As you know, this was President Obama's last week in office. He may not have done what everybody thinks he should have done, but I believe that he gave the best effort that he could in that White House. There are more jobs in this country. He's tried to provide health care. And on top of President Obama leaving, we're also losing Michelle, who is the best first lady to ever occupy that White House, wanting to end obesity in America, making sure our veterans are taken care of, and the list of her accolades and all the things that she's done it goes on and on and on. America took a huge L this week with them walking out of the Oval Office, walking out of the White House, and kind of walking out of the public service eye from, from a government perspective and now becoming private citizens yet again. And that leads me into number four, Donald Trump. Somehow this man is, has become the 45th president of the United States. I still have not 
fully taken it in that we allow this man who has bragged about sexual assault, someone who has mocked the disabled, someone who has talked about black people, Muslims, Jews, our Latino brothers and sisters, who has dragged every single ethnic group. Somehow that man is now occupying the White House and is now the leader of the free world. But there was a little glimmer of hope that we can all gloat about. Well, I don't know about y'all, but for me, he was hoping that this his inauguration would be this big, big, big party with so many people lining the streets. And when you look at the crowds and when you look you know, at all the aerial views and the pictures of the shots from the, from the inauguration, you can see that the crowd is visibly thinner than that of President Obama's inauguration when he got inaugurated the first time. So for Donald Trump, this had to be a kick in the teeth knowing that didn't nobody wanna hang out with you, bruh. Don't nobody wanna see you get into office. We just don't care. We're too busy trying to figure out a way for you not to be in office for four years. Number five, well, it's actually not an L, it's actually a win for women all across America and all across the globe. Today, the day after the inauguration, there was a, a women's march organized to march in on Washington, but there were rallies and marches all across the world, from Chicago all the way to New Zealand, all across Europe. There were rallies and marches, marches happening to help explain the fact that women's rights are human rights. For some reason, they wanna pull the rug out from underneath us and send us back to the 50s. But women across the world basically said, we ain't having it. So it was cool to see all across the country, all across the world, women banding together. So kudos to all the ladies out there who decided to march, no matter what the conditions were, there is strength in numbers for us to do amazing things. So that's it for this week. Tell me about what you thought happened this week. Who took the biggest L? Was there a story I missed that you wanted to hear about? Put it in the comments below, show me some love. And until next time, I want you guys to laugh hard, love hard, dream big. This is J-Rock out.